So you might have noticed by now that one consequence of doing homework all on a computer is that some things don't work as well as they would on paper. And that's just, you know, there's pros and cons to it. But uh, one thing that doesn't work well is graphing. And the reason is, uh, if we were to give you a graphing problem and say an equation, and say, draw this equation on the graph, please, you would have to take your mouse and using your mouse draw a function on a, pic on a graph that would then be marked uh, right or wrong by a computer. If you've ever tried to sign your name using a mouse or one of those trackpads on your laptop, you know how awful this would look. You'd be lucky to have the curves in the right place on the graph. Actually doing this with precision is impossible. It would just look terrible. So that's the reason we're focusing on backwards graphing as a test to see if you really understand how all these pieces go together. Because if you understand how to make a graph forwards, you, there's no difficulty in doing it backwards either. It, it, it's the same difficulty in either direction. So what I want to do now is talk about how to find the equation of the polynomial that made this graph. And what we're going to do so we're going to focus on a few aspects that we've talked about. The first thing I want to talk about is these x-intercepts. Those are the most important parts of a graph. So, if you remember where x-intercepts come from, this should not surprise you what I'm writing down here. I'm taking each one of those x-intercepts in turn, and I'm making a factor that's a pretty good guess. See this one? x minus 3 came from a factor of x plus 3. Uh, x equals negative 1 half came from a factor of x plus 1 half. And this factor over here uh, at positive 2 came from x minus 2. Now, um, you may not like having a fraction in there, and that's okay. If you don't like a fraction, you can turn this into x plus 3, 2x plus 1, and x minus 2. You'll, you'll notice I've changed the value of this function, but we're going to take care of that later. Don't worry about it. The important part is that you get the x-intercept correct. And either one of these uh, two equations that I just wrote get the x-intercept correct. So we're going to go with the bottom one just because I don't like writing fractions. It takes more work. So now I have those x-intercepts. Let's use our knowledge about multiplicity to figure out what the proper exponents are. If you look at the negative 3 point over here, you'll see that's a bounce. So this has to be a squared. And likewise, the next x-intercept moving to the right also is a squared because that's bouncing. But this x minus 2 is just a simple cross of the graph, so that's going to stay at an exponent of 1. And if you're wondering why I chose exponents of 2, 2, and 1 instead of uh, 4, 6, and 3, for example, because really all that's necessary is that they're even or odd. How am I to know if it's 4 or 2? They're both even numbers, right? Well, the truth is you don't know. But we're going to use the principle of uh, we're going to try to find polynomials of least degree. In other words, it is just a safe bet that you should always use the smallest exponents that you can. So, this is my first guess. However, I might not have gotten the y-intercept right. And we actually, we can tell really fast if we got the right y-intercept by doing 3 squared okay, times 1 squared times negative 2. That gives us a y-intercept of... Hmm, negative 18, which is totally wrong, right? We're supposed to get positive 6. So how do we get the right y-intercept here? Well, we have to realize that this function that we wrote here is just a guess. Remember, I didn't really know anything about the value that goes in front, right? That could be a greatest common factor, like 2 or 7 or negative 5 or negative 3 quarters. It could be a fraction. We're going to figure out what that really is by saying f of 0 equals this mystery number b. I don't know what b is. We're going to figure it out. 0 plus 3, uh, 0 plus 1, right? I'm finding the y-intercept. And I'm assuming that this b is going to be important. So that y-intercept better be plus 6, by the way, because that's what the graph tells me. Right there, plus 6. So this is going to be b times 9 times 1 times negative 2 equals 6. So in other words, negative 18b equals 6. Well, that means b equals negative 1 third. So now we're ready to write our full equation, and we're basically done. f of x equals negative 1 third times x plus 3 squared times 2x plus 1 
squared times x minus 2. Okay, so I think I'm done. I just want to check one more thing before we finish this off. And the last thing I want to check is way back up here. Remember end behavior? This function right here, from these arrows, I can tell that it's a negative odd function. Right? It starts up and it goes down. So this is negative odd. Well, does the power function that we just figured out down here match? So let's figure out what the power function is. This is your final ultimate check to make sure you got it right. Power function is negative one third times x squared times two x to the fourth times x. Well, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be, uh, what did I get fourth from? Oh gosh. Um, yeah, that's a squared. So negative four thirds x two four five count up the x's it's x to the fifth so that right there is your power function and indeed that is negative odd so we are all good the y-intercept matches the uh the power function and behavior matches and we already went over all the multiplicities of this thing so that is how you backwards graph